Good morning. Uh, today is, what is it? Oh, uh, May 24th, and uh, we're getting closer to June, which means closer to opening, but we still don't um, have um, a very good plan. A council is going to meet soon, and we're going to talk about the year going forward. But before that, we are going to continue to worship. And I thank all of you for tuning in this week. And Jim and I had a wonderful time in Washington visiting his brother. And things are going well on that front for now. We are also uh, helping my mom prepare for selling her house, which that's going to be a very long and uphill uh, project. And uh, I know all of you are just getting so ready for the state to open. And I know we're doing um, little by little. And I really think that the, our governor is doing, being very responsible about opening up Minnesota. We're not going as fast as some states, but uh, I think he's making a good decision by going slow. Here's our opening, uh, opening message from Psalm 68. Let God rise up, let God's enemies be scattered and let those who hate God flee before God. But let the righteous be joyful and let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing praises to God's name, lift up a song to the one who rides on the clouds. Father and mother of orphans and protector of widows is our God who gives the desolate a home to live in. God leads out the prisoners to prosperity. Reign in abundance, O God. In your goodness you provided for the needy. Awesome is God in sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to us. Our, our first song is a good opener, God Speak to Me. So I hope that we all um, Give this a try this week. <clears throat> God speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of your tone. As you have sought, so let me seek your erring children lost and lone. Oh, lead me, God, that I may lead some wanderers along life's way. Oh, feed me so that I may feed your hungry ones without delay. Oh, use me, God, use even me, just as you will and when and where. Until your blessed face I see, your rest, your joy, your glory share. As the body of Christ, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to be Christ's witnesses. Each of us has our own story of what Jesus' life means for us. Through our life stories, we can convey hope through the hope to the hopeless, joy to the downtrodden, and peace where there is turmoil. Therefore, let us clothe ourselves in humility sharing the good news of Christ, that may, we may all be one. In this, God will be well pleased. Today we have two separate scripture passages, and I'm going to start with the epistle letter. I'm going to read from 1 Peter 4 and 5. Uh, don't worry, it's a short, it's a short one. And uh, this is written about the time that the Christians were being persecuted in the arenas. Uh, the Romans had decided to turn on the Christians 
And this was about the time that we got kicked out of the synagogues because the Jews wanted to separate us from them because they didn't want to get persecuted. So they started kicking us out and we were moving into homes in secret. And this was probably the very the early second century. And, uh, and this is the time when we found we needed to get together. Excuse me, somebody is begging to come up. Okay. This is the time that uh, we started to uh, really talk about hope and hanging on in there and being persecuted for what we believe in. So this is the time where we um, find more of that writing in the New Testament. So here are our words from the author of 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you. It is to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice so far as you are sharing in Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when our glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because of the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God. It is resting upon you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that God may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on God, because you are cared for. Discipline yourselves and keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist that steadfast in your faith for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering and after you have suffered for a little while the god of all grace who has called you to eternal glory will restore support strengthen and establish you many have called this uh going through the sufferings of life and then be nurtured once we we die and go to heaven we've started a new life with god and that our all our suffering in life has been uh, fulfilled or has redeemed us but we could look at this in a contextual way uh, according to the original story that this was really about christians suffering under uh, nero and the evil caesars and um in the beginning, we, we, we kind of called it testing of our faith. If we went through all of these ordeals and, and we were killed and persecuted, but we never gave up on God. The early Christians would call that a test and we would pass if we never forsake God in our suffering. To look at it today, I think of this as what we're going through right now with COVID-19, I, I don't think it's a test. I, I think uh, the stay-at-home order and all the COVID restrictions that are going on out there um, are testing our patients, that's for sure. But I do not think that at the end, and we come through it, I don't think we're gonna pass the test by surviving COVID. I think that if we get through this and we, we don't, start getting mad about it and, and telling God, wow, I'm really disappointed in you, uh, then, then we're going to see that we can live a different way, that we, we can think in different ways, and, and we are certainly going to be stronger, and I think we're going to appreciate each other more by going through all of these restrictions. And I, I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to feel uh, really what freedom is once we are able to get back out of our homes uh, we're going to appreciate that even more all the things that are open to us especially in america uh, all our relationships uh, we're going to find out which ones are the good ones and we're going to find out uh, just how grateful we are for our community and uh, to not take that for granted I have this book, it's called The Tao of Jesus, and I have this great quote I thought would be really supplemental to the First Peter passage. 
uh, the, the Lao Tzu has these words, profoundly dark and ever profoundly dark, the gateway to infinite wonders. So it's saying that things are dark and, and they're profoundly dark. But once you get to the other side, or perhaps you're going through a very dark tunnel and you get to the light on the other side, you realize that all the possibilities are limitless. So this is a profound time in our lives and we will get on the other side and it's going to open us up. I think that's exactly what the author of 1 Peter was saying. Now for our gospel passage, <clears throat> We're going to go back in time to where we had been in the Easter season. Uh, so we're going to go back to John 17. Be Lately, we've been talking about what the disciples did after Jesus left. Uh, but we're now back at the Last Supper. And in the book of John, Jesus is giving the disciples like this sermon his final message to the people of the world and uh, he's telling them how wonderful they are and how how grateful he is to them and what what this is is right after his sermon he looks up at from the table and he starts talking to God so he's praying to God in on behalf of the disciples in front of the disciples so this is um, his last blessing for his closest inner circle. And I'm reading John 17, 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, God, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, God, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. Real quick break there. Jesus is talking to God, and notice he isn't saying please. Uh, these, are, these are just authoritative requests from a son to a father. And uh, Jesus is saying, I did what you asked me to. And he's also, uh, the author here is kind of giving his little theological input by saying that Jesus has been with God the entire time. And, and that if, even before uh, the book of Genesis, uh, Jesus and God have been together. Um, so that's a little theological bent on it. Um, but what it's really saying is I've, I've done the job and I have glorified you and I've shown all the people that have been with me uh, what you wanted for them. And it goes on, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know the truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are. And I am coming to you, God. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. There's a lot to unpack in that prayer, especially the second half. And the one most poignant part of it that I think is important to think about is Jesus received everything he had on earth from God. 
And he said, I received this all from you. And he's really talking about his friends. I've received all of these from you, and now I give them back to your care. And this is almost like a poem I read once where we are given the gift of our children and we spend our life uh, treating them and uh, training them and loving them and teaching them. And when it is time to send that out, them out into the world, we let them go and we give them back to God. And this is something I really like to say maybe at confirmation graduations or even at regular graduations uh, that's some uh, that's an idea that I like to share with people that you know, our, our children don't belong to us and everything that we have does not belong to us it belongs to God and so it really gives us this interesting insight into what property is um, how how we present ourselves to the world? Uh, are we being good disciples? Are we showing the world what God wants the world to know? So our actions and our words are really important, as well as how we feel about everything that we have. Um, are we able to give that back to God? Uh, are we able to be humble about what we have and are we, are we telling people that we're better than them? Or are we telling people that look at the hope I have and look at the joy that God brings me? You can share in this too. So it, it be, because we, when we let things go, when we let all of our things go, all our worries, and it's hard to do, when we when we're able to step back and say, this does not belong to me. The good and the bad things do not belong to me. Therefore, I can get to the other side and I can be over that. I don't need to worry. I don't need to wonder where my next meal is going to come from. Well, that's, that's a different story, I guess. But we could really we can really depend on our faith and our hope to say this this doesn't matter none of this matters what matters is the other side are we going to be free from our chains our bonds that the things on earth that hold us back from being the full potential of ourselves and and that's my theology on it let's take a look at the characters in the story uh, we have God, Jesus is talking to God, we have Jesus who is praying right now, and we have the disciples that are listening in. They, they don't have much to say at this point, but how would you feel, or this probably has happened, that somebody has prayed out loud in, in a large group, it, it could even have been me, uh, or uh, some other person in your life, and they were praying about you and f on your behalf. And, and how do you feel about that? How, how did you feel? Did you feel, well, first of all, did you feel embarrassed or, that you didn't deserve such a nice gesture? Or did you feel tingly that you thought, oh, this is just a wonderful moment in my life? And... Um, I'm so thankful. Um, there, there could even be a time where uh, I've, I've had people pray and I've gotten mad because uh, people have prayed that uh, I, hopefully I have given my life over to God and that hopefully I'll be going to heaven. And I was a little offended at that <laughs> because, well, that's up to me, not you, man. Uh, so you could feel a lot of different ways, but I, I could, I'm guessing that the disciples were just tingly with anticipation and realizing that this was a special moment. And so they were kind of listening in on this intimate discussion that Jesus was having with God. It was almost son and father talking to each other and uh, realizing that 
Jesus really loved them. He cared so much for his friends that he, he, he knew that God would take care of them. So I think that he was praying and he was letting his friends know that God was going to take care of them. There is another uh, part of the prayer that comes to mind when I think about this. There, there was one time where I was suffering at the very beginning when I was just starting to realize I was suffering from very debilitating depression. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget this story. I, I, I went into my pastor's office because he started me off with the with the counseling part and really helping me because of course at the beginning I was thinking I must be a horrible person that this would happen to me. Uh, I didn't understand why life was so confusing and I didn't understand because I was going through all the right motions. I was going to church, I was praying, I was putting my trust in God and I was doing all the right things and saying all the right things and yet I couldn't really get my life together. It, it, was, it, it, it is such a frustrating and debilitating disease that you just know inside of you that you're not worth it. Uh, that's what that disease was doing to me. And uh, I went to him and he goes, well, Susan, let me ask you, how do you pray? And I'm like, duh. I pray that God will take this away from me. What, what else would you pray? I was pretty young at that time. And, and he goes, did you ever think that you're praying wrong? And I went, what? There's a right way to pray? Uh, I guess that wasn't part of my Sunday school lessons growing up. And he said, let's start small and, and make your goals attainable. So what I, I would like you to do this week is go home and start praying that you can deal with it. Don't, so he said, don't pray to get rid of it. Pray to, to deal with it. So what he was saying to me is own it. Um, get, excuse you, she just sneezed. He said, own it. Bring everything into you. And then welcome it and tell God, this is what I have. Where can I go right now? And every, I, I think every year I came across a situation where I remembered that counseling session. And it, it was at the beginning of my journey in seminary and I started taking a Tai Chi class. And there's this movement, I can't even remember what it's called, I think it was the tiger, where it, the, the teacher just said, get all that junk that is coming at you. Just gather it up, gather it up, gather it up, bring it into you, welcome it, name it, pet it, whatever you want to do. So she get, get all your negative chi, gather it up, and then <sighs> you blow it out the top of your head. And uh, that's exactly, I think, what my pastor was trying to tell me. And uh, from then on, I even use this in my counseling now and uh, working with adults with disabilities. Uh, I do that. I do centering where we breathe. We do breathing exercises. And then I just go, get all that junk in there. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. And now I breathe it in and then let it go. And uh, it, it's a way for us to acknowledge that it exists because it, evil or what we perceive as evil is always there. It doesn't just go away. And indeed, if we didn't have it in our lives, we, I honestly believe we wouldn't be able to know what real good is. So it's that comparison part. Uh, and so we want to acknowledge it, that it's there. We can't just turn a blind eye to it. Um, and, and we just can't pray and say, ooh, let that go. Or uh, people, I've heard people say, well, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to wear a mask because God won't let me get sick because I'm a good Christian. Yeah, we've heard that on the news, and unfortunately, um, there's been a lot of times where people who have said that have absolutely ended up in the hospital. So we, 
we gather that evil up and then we get it out of there because it's going to exist you're going to have those thoughts inside you but at the same time they do not define you they do not define us those bad thoughts those bad things because what we read in john 17 what we read in john 17 is that god cares for us and god is watching us and god loves us just as we are god's not going to wait for my depression to go away to love me god already loves me and so i think it makes me stronger that I have dealt with these things in my life and now I can help others who are dealing with it and I think that it's a part of me and I embrace it and I know how to name it I know how to I, I talk to my depression and um, I, I take medication that certainly helps but I, I'm able to understand it and God never took it away from me and actually, I never got around to praying like that again. Because after I started acknowledging it and accepting it as part of me and knowing that God loved me anyway, and it wasn't really a, a part of what God loved, I, I realized I didn't need to get rid of it. I, I dealt with it, and I still do. And it actually helps me navigate the world. So that's really exciting to look at myself like that and notice that I go out in the world and it, it helps me less likely to judge as quick. Um, uh, of course, there, I, I run into mean people all the time, but uh, I, I think when I sit down and think about it, I think, wow, they must have had a really bad day. Okay. Somebody just bonked her head, so I'm going to let her down. All right. So this is Jesus bearing his soul to his friends. And us learning through Jesus' words that we are worth it. Every single one of us is worth God's time and God's love and care and understanding and the disciples were connected through this and they went out and started what we now know as the Christian church because of these words uh, I found another quote from Fred Rogers and uh, he said once the connections we make in the course of a life Maybe that is what heaven is. So our friendships are a blessing. And our friendships are a gift from God. And that's why we need to keep them. And we need to keep ourselves grounded in each other. And we need to share our lives with each other. Because we are what God has given to each of us. We've been given to God for us. That does not make sense. Uh, but uh, so spend the week thinking about that. Maybe you will find sense in that. So I'd like to shout out to uh, the community and let let everybody know there the day is coming. Uh, uh, kind of like um, Game of Thrones, where they say winter is coming. So I'm going to continue to say church is coming. Uh, and you're not going to have to go onto YouTube to watch it. And I'm going to be very thankful when I don't have to do these posts anymore. And now uh, probably somebody's going to say, hey, keep doing it. But I, I do not like being taped. <laughs> I don't think a lot of us do. Uh, and I think that... This is, I have reached, you know what? This is actually a gift too. Because, now I'm starting to ramble. Because this whole COVID thing has made me reach the boundaries of my technological mind. And it's been tested quite a bit. 
and it has humbled me and I have learned how to ask for help. Uh, but when we get together again in church, I'm going to be very thankful. So I can't wait to see all of you, and I hope this finds all of you doing well. And just keep it up. You are loved, and you are worthy. And know that God cares for you just the way you are. I have one more song, and then I will give you the benediction. And uh, just keep, keep on keeping on, and we'll see each other again soon. <clears throat> all right. I hope you guys all know this. Uh, I think we have most of the words there. <clears throat> How can I say thanks? For the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all to you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things you have done. With your blood. To go!